These games all have something in common, their 3D engine. More than 250 studios used it, and at one time, it powered a quarter of all new console releases, helping to define a generation of games. Before Unity and Unreal, Renderware was the little engine that could. But its dominance was short-lived. In 2004, it was probably the most popular game engine in the world, but two years later, it was effectively dead. How could something fall so far so fast? What went wrong with Renderware? Originally, the Renderware engine was neither a product of the games industry, nor aimed at that market. It was created by the camera company Canon at their European Research Lab. They spun it off into a subsidiary, with the aim of licensing the engine for applications like computer-aided design and virtual reality worlds. An early profile in Edge magazine sang the technology's praises in terms that verged on the hyperbolic. Hard-nosed PC and IT correspondents at the launch couldn't believe what they saw was being generated in real time on a 486 portable PC. A new generation of software is around the corner. But let's put this article in context. This was still the Windows 3.1 era. There was no DirectX, and OpenGL hadn't yet made it to home machines. Desktop 3D was something you only saw on Silicon Graphics workstations, or in movies. As well as the core group of developers creating the engine, the company soon started a small game development studio to apply that technology. Their role was twofold, producing commercial games designed to show off Renderware's potential, and giving practical feedback to the engine team, so that they could tailor the toolkit to developers' needs. These early games, released on the PC, with a couple also on the Dreamcast, weren't particularly successful for the company, but games were just their side business, and they got some interest for their engine out of it. But though their early focus was on the PC, their breakthrough would not come on that platform. It was with the launch of the PlayStation 2 that Renderware found its market. The machine's architecture was complex and unfamiliar, and writing code to display a simple 3D scene required a high level of expertise. Interfacing with Renderware's libraries rather than the hardware itself was a considerable time saver, trimming the company claimed 6 to 12 months from a typical development cycle, and with the engine also available for PC, Xbox, GameCube and PSP, it made multi-platform development much easier too. Renderware was far from perfect, the convenience came with a performance hit, and it could be frustrating to work with, but the trade-off was often worth it. It was relatively affordable, so even a small team could get in on the action, and it was extremely versatile. You could build a sports game, a shooter, a strategy game, puzzler, platformer, RPG, flight sim, there were even one or two MMOs. Renderware powered titles number in the hundreds, and include generation-defining games like the Tony Hawk series and the GTA 3 trilogy. As the company grew, the games they produced internally improved far beyond mere engine demos. To the public, making games was what the company was known for, and it wasn't long before the accountants thought so too. With the success of their destructive arcade racing series Burnout, they were now making more money selling games to the public than from selling tools to game developers. This combination of marketable entertainment and coveted technology was irresistible to buyers. And in mid-2004, Electronic Arts bought the company, which if you haven't worked it out was called Criterion, from Canon for $48 million. The acquisition sent shockwaves through an industry heavily reliant on renderware. Hundreds of studios, including Sega, Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, Activision, Rockstar, Konami and Capcom, had Renderware games in development, and overnight, it was owned by their biggest competitor. One magazine described the story like this. Electronic Arts buys the rug devs are standing on. EA pledged that support for Renderware would continue uninterrupted, but studios were nervous about handing money to their biggest rival, and there was a trust problem too. Would the new owners really supply their best technology to their competitors? The CEO promised they would but skeptical customers looked to switch to alternatives as quickly as possible. Before the buyout, Criterion had demonstrated the next generation of renderware, version 4, which promised to do for the Xbox 360 and PS3 what version 3 had done for the PS2. But the industry's concerns were proven correct. Updates to the renderware website ceased almost immediately. All talk of the new version stopped. 
Before long, EA terminated the licensing program, switching RenderWare to support mode for existing customers. Soon after that, it was described as effectively dead. And then, the final nail was hammered into RenderWare's coffin. EA licensed the Unreal Engine for its projects. Once the first choice for cross-platform development, RenderWare never made the promised leap to the next generation. Epic's Unreal Engine would fill the vacuum it left behind and become the market leader on the PS3, the 360, and beyond. We don't really know what EA's intentions were towards RenderWare. Some speculated that they bought Criterion to get their hands on the studio's IP and expertise in racing games, that they didn't care about RenderWare and deliberately killed it off to hurt the competition. But there's evidence that that wasn't the case. Of course they wanted the Burnout franchise, but they also, it appears, had big plans for RenderWare internally. They spoke publicly about deploying an enhanced RenderWare 4 as the common technical infrastructure across all of their studios. But despite their best efforts, Criterion's team were unable to keep up with the rapid evolution of the Unreal Engine. RenderWare's capabilities were surpassed, and EA cut their losses, spelling the end of the technology and the team of talented engineers that had created it. The days of game development in RenderWare are long gone. It's been six years since the last game, a Chinese mythological RPG, was released on the engine, and over a decade since the last major title, Persona 4 Golden hit the shelves. I found only one place it's still in use today, powering one of the longest running 3D online spaces, Active Worlds. And apparently, Criterion's racing game pedigree is also a thing of the past. The founders left, a promised open-world vehicle game was cancelled, and the company was cut to less than 20 staff before being rebuilt in a different form, a support studio for other EA projects. They didn't even handle the recent remaster of their own Burnout Paradise. But EA recently announced that the studio, now employing over 100 people, was working on a new installment of the Need for Speed franchise. So while it's not really the same place anymore, maybe we haven't seen the last game with a Criterion logo. Criterion's burnout games have never been forgotten, but through RenderWare, the company had a hand in many more favorites, helping to make that console generation the success that it was. Their work was critical for reducing barriers to development on the PS2, and I don't think they're appreciated enough for that. If things had gone differently, Criterion could have remained a major player in the game engine space. Perhaps with the right investment, the right decisions, and a lot of good fortune, RenderWare might have been a rival to Unity and Unreal today. But that's just a fanciful what-if. RenderWare was the 3D engine that changed the world, but got left behind in the process. Right through the air, right through the air. Backside, front side, front side, uptown, downtown, kick it. Backside, front side. Me again, on a headset mic this time, things happened and then more things happened. Anyway, long story short, it's been six months without an episode, but the drought is finally over. Thank you so much to my patrons for your extraordinary patience. If you liked this, then please share the link with others. Word of mouth makes this channel possible. I'm Chris, and I'll see you again in the past.